Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters, grace and peace. My name is Brother Yehuda, and today's topic is part two of Abraham and the covenant of circumcision. The covenant with Abraham renewed. Now we're in the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 4 through 6. And I'm going to read the verses. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy, thy name any more be called Abram, Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. That's in the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 4 through 6. Now, the promise here is introduced with dignity. As for me, said the great God, behold, behold and admire it. Behold and be assured of it. My covenant is with thee. As before in the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. That's in the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 2. Now, God said, I will make my covenant. Now, the covenant of grace is a covenant of God's own making. This God glories in as for me. And so may we now hear it is the promise to Abraham that he should be a father of many nations. That is that he that his seed after the flesh should be very numerous, both in Isaac and Ishmael, as well as in sons of Qatar, which is incense. Something extraordinary is doubtless include, included in this promise, and we may suppose that the event answered to it and that there was, there has been, and are more of the children of men descended from Abraham than from the any one man of any equal distance with him from Noah. The common root, now that all believers in every age should be looked upon as Abram, Abraham's spiritual seed, and that he should be called not only the friend of God, but the father of the faithful. Now in this sense, the apostle directs us to understand this promise. We're going to go in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end of promise, might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I had made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, a call those things which be not as though they were. That's in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Meaning the conclusion of this argument, the salvation and justification of the posterity or future generation of Abraham, that is of the church, which is composed of of all believers proceeds from the faith which is laid hold on the promise made to Abraham and which promise Abraham himself first of all laid hold on now to all the believers that is to say not only of those which believe and are also circumcised also to the law but of those also who without circumcision and with respect of faith only are counted among the children of Abraham. In other words, not only the ones that was under the law of circumcision, is the ones that wasn't even under the law of circumcision, but if you have faith, now you, you have, you're invited into the kingdom. Salvation is granted to you through faith, not by the work of the law. Now this fatherhood is spiritual, dependent only upon the power of God who made the promise because people have to understand how it's the spiritual promise and who made the promise God made the promise but there are people questioning the promise and questioning the word of God 
And that's not right because you have to go by what the scripture says. Stay in the scripture because if you're going anywhere else, you're going to be all over the place. And if the only way you're going to be having questions about what the promise is that, the, that God made with Abraham is because you're going somewhere else. You're getting teaching from other people and they're giving you the wrong information. And that's where you'll be all over the place. But before God, that is by membership in his spiritual family, which has a place before God and makes us acceptable to God, who restores to life, with whom those things are already, which as yet are not indeed, as God can with a word make what God wishes out of nothing. Now we're going to go in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Now why can't a person just believe in what the word says as opposed to and, 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 you know, because a lot of people have been taught, uh, like me, I was taught as a kid with the Catholic Church and this and that, that a lot of understanding was just confusing. You know, we didn't really understand this way. You know, you start running around like a madman because you're not really, you don't have the, the full foundation of what the word is saying. So you start just, you just stray away slowly but surely. But as you get older, when you start studying, actually just when in the Bible, just studying you get to build your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And it comes more clearer to you as opposed to when and then when you teach the next person, they'll get it clear. But a lot of times when you teach the next person, they're stuck in the old way of their, what they've been taught that they can't hear the, the truth. So it blocks them. So that's where they have a lot of arguments and stuff like that because they don't have that full understanding of the wisdom of God. Now Abraham is the father of those in which nation that by faith enter into covenant with God and as the Jewish writers expressed it are gathering under the wings of the divine majesty. Now in in token of this Abram's name was changed from Abram a higher father to Abraham, the father of a multitude. Now this was to put an honor upon him. Now it is spoken of as the glory of the church that she shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. We're going to go on the book of Isaiah chapter 62 verse 6. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all the kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name that's in the book of Isaiah chapter 62 verse 2 meaning <clears throat> meaning you will have a more excellent fame than you have had until now now prince dignified their favorites by confer conferring new titles upon them was Abraham dignified by him that is indeed the fountain of honor. Now all the believers have a new name. We're going to go on the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. To him that overcome, overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manner, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth saying he that received it that's in the book of revelation chapter 2 verse 17 now the conclusion by way of exhortation as before and of promise now the bread of life we all know who the bread of life is jesus jesus christ invisible spiritual and heavenly which is kept secretly with god from before all eat external eternity he alludes to the book of psalm chapter 105 verse 40 the people asked the people asked and he brought quails 
and satisfy them with the bread of heaven. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 105, verse 4. Now we're going to go in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 26 to 59. It's a long, because I, I had to put all this in there because it brings out better understanding on the bread and the manner that came from heaven. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were full. Lord, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. So a lot of people, they read these scriptures and they're not knowing what is, what is Jesus saying. So he, goes, so he says, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek not me, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were full. So he said, they seek him because they got, they, when Christ came and fed them, they ate the food, but they don't seek him because they believe. Now he said, labor not of the meat which perisheth. Like, don't labor for the food that's going to that's going to go bad but for the meat which endures unto everlasting life the meat which is Christ he, he's, he endures for everlasting life which the son of man shall give unto you for him has God the father sealed so he's saying that the son of man which is Christ he will give to us for eternal life and it's sealed then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. He said, This is the work of God, that you believe on Christ, the one that sent them, which is God. They said therefore unto him, What sign showeth thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doeth thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. So in other words, he's saying that Moses gave him regular bread, but the father is giving you true bread from heaven, that the true bread of life, which is coming from heaven, which is Jesus Christ for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world so Christ came from heaven a lot of people get stuck on oh he he came from Mary but he was conceived by the Holy Spirit so that means he was without mother or father he was conceived by the Holy Spirit let's not get that let's not, let's not make that mistake because that's part of believing because, you know, man thinks that God is thinks and works like they work. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Now they want the bread. They still not really understanding what bread it is because Christ already came and gave them the bread. But they still not understand what bread Christ is talking about. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall not never shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So in other words, he's saying, all that the Father gave to him, he gives you. And he will not cast you out because you're coming to Christ. Because that's the only way to the Father. That's the door. For I came down from heaven not to be to my, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Christ said he came down from heaven not to do his own will, but the will of the Father. God Almighty he came to do his will. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me I shall I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day so in other words he's telling them all that he's given me that everyone that came to Christ is coming through the father is coming to Christ so they can receive so they can be with the father he said he will not 
cast them out and he will give them at the end he will quicken them and raise them up so when he come back he will raise you up to eternal life in a whole new body that's at the last day but you have to believe that that's where that john 3 16 come at that if you believe you'll have eternal life but you have to believe that a lot of people just don't believe that they'll say god lord all day long but it's written that everyone that says lord lord gets to the kingdom but you have to believe in what Christ is telling you and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day the Jews then murmured like people doing now at him because he said I am the bread of which came down from heaven see they didn't believe which is people now, they don't believe that he's the bread. They think that he came from Mary like a regular like a regular pregnancy. No, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He had to come in the flesh. So he because the flesh is the sin, but he had to come in the flesh and it had to be pure blood to take away the sin, to die for the sin. The blood that he shed was unblemished. So he had to come in that form like man. But no, knew no sin to die for us and to shed his blood so he can free us, free that ransom, that hold that we had on us with sin. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? See, like I said, they didn't understand what's, what's going on, but they just talking. And they're supposed to be the ones that's doing all the studying and they have no, no knowledge. How is it then that he says, I came down from heaven? They're not understanding the word. It's already written in the Old Testament that this, the, the, the son is coming and the governor shall be over his head. It's already written. So why are they not understanding this? Because their minds is in the carnal mind. And they're not trying to, and they're still in the old ways, like we spoke of earlier. They're still in that old set mind that they've been taught through the high priests and all these other guys. And they're stuck and they don't want to believe. And this is why... They thought to condemn Jesus because what he was saying. They thinking that he's speaking blasphemy, but he's speaking the truth. And he came humble as ever. And they, he showed them the works that he would do that's coming from the Father, but they still believed him not. Jesus therefore answered and said, because Jesus got an answer for all. Jesus answered, therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur, mur, not among yourself. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day so he's explaining to them again no man can come to me unless the father sends him and I and he will raise him up on the last day it is written in the prophets and they shall be all taught of God every man therefore that has heard and has learned of the father cometh unto me so Christ is telling you, everyone that learns of the Father and have heard of the Father comes to Christ because that's the order. But we got people that they got their own books and they're reading this stuff and they're giving people wrong information and people are following it. They're going for it. They're thinking that you have to do. It's not only that they don't believe that, that Christ is the Savior. A lot of them don't believe that you by through Christ, you're saved. A lot of them, they're thinking that by the works of the law. That's how you say you have to still continue in the Mosaic laws. And this is where, where salvation comes. God is not judging you on that no more. That's why Christ came. And then, you know, first you got to understand why did Jesus Christ come? What did he come for? He didn't come to pe preach another man. He didn't come to preach a, 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 another Moses or another, a, a, what's his name, um, Muhammad or a, a Pope. He came to preach of the kingdom. He's speaking of better promises that's made through Jesus Christ of the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. Simple as that. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna. He's answering the, with the question earlier when they asked, did your father eat manna? Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and, and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, 
he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. And he's, he's breaking it down to him. But people still not trying to hear it. They're not believing. They thinking Muhammad. They thinking the Pope. They thinking this. Oh, my high priest. What is he talking about? They all lost. He said, let's read that part. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. That's why he's called the bread of life. Which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat so they're thinking that he's going to cut off his arm and say here eat this part eat this arm they're not understanding that is in the word your claims by the word and your belief your mindset got to be changed from all that doubt and all that misunderstanding you got to be changed and washed and leave it to christ and he's the one that washed you they don't want to go through the wash they want to stay filthy on the inside and act like they're clean on the inside. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. What's, what's so hard to, to understand? He's explaining it to you in this, this, these verses. That's why I had to put this in there because this breaks it down so clearly. Christ, that's why I say, if you come to Christ, you'll get better understanding. But if you come to man, man is going to dictate it the way they feel. Oh, I don't know how a, a, a person can get pregnant without having sex. That's because you're not God. God said the word. They don't understand the command came from God from the beginning. Be fruitful and multiply. So that's, just, that's how you're able to have babies anyway. <laughs> to, to the heavenly father in Christ through that word he said be fruitful and multiply now a lot of people is multiplied but they're not being fruitful this man is always taking things on their own level and this is how all the mistakes and people run around here bumping their heads with each other blind leading the blind going into the ditch false prophets taking money from people false prophets preaching the wrong word another doctrine another gospel speaking of another Jesus another Christ worrying about Jesus name his name is this his name is that because they're lost they're not understanding the message believe in Christ this is all you have to do believe in Christ now when you believe in Christ you start doing Christ stuff Christ like you start walking in that spirit of Christ whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day he said it again it's the third time he said it in this in this, in this um, chapter here. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me gives he shall live by me. It, it, I'm sorry. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue. As he taught in Capernaum. That's in the book of John. Chapter 6. Verse 26 through 59. And I advise you. It's really. If you, if you call yourself a man of God. A Christian. Or whatever you want to call your Israelite. And you're not following in what Christ said. Especially in these verses. And this chapter 6 of John. And to, to get better understand. Because you, you can't get. You got to get taught by the Holy Spirit. Once you open that door and receive it. All answers will be answered through the spirit. You're not going to be able to get it. Keep going to jumping over from here to there and going to this class and teaching at that camp and go over this. You're going to be lost. And that's just where a lot of people is lost. Now, Arethas writes that such a stone was given to wrestlers at games or else that's such stone 
did in old times witness the leaving of a man. Now, which is a sign and witness of forgiveness and remission of sin, of righteousness and true holiness and of purity uncorrupted after the sin nature is destroyed. Now, a sign and testimony of newness of life in righteousness and true holiness by putting on the new man, whom no one inwardly knows but the spirit of man, which is in him, which is not praised by man, but by God. We're going to go in the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. So that's in the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 28. Because a person think that because they wear this outfit or they look like this, that they, you know, I'm a Jew. But you're not a Jew outwardly, it's inwardly in the flesh. When you put on Christ and when you receive his word. And you walk in harmony with your brothers and sisters. You walk in love. You do unto others as you want done to you. Your conduct is totally changes on righteousness. Now, that's the inward Jew. You don't have to wear a certain kind of garment that they put on nowadays for a person to say, oh, he's Jewish. Or he's an Israelite. But have bad conduct, bad table manners. But they want to sit at the table of, of the bread, of the lamb. And think that they're going to have bad table manners. And doubt what, what the king says, which is Jesus Christ. Meaning you are not a Jew by the outward ceremonies only. Now, some think by doing the ceremony assemblies, God approves them. When even with bad conduct and disobedience. But by being obedient to the faith, it added to the honor of Abraham's new name. Now we're going to go into the book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 28. Is this man, Kana, a despised broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? Wherefore are they cast out? He that has, he and his seed, and are cast into a land which they know not. That's in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 28. Now, believers are named from Christ. We're going to go in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 15. Of whom the whole family is, a whole family in heaven and earth is named. Meaning that entire people who had but one household father, and that is the church, which is adopted in Christ. Now, to encourage and confirm the faith of Abraham, while he was childless, perhaps even his own name was sometimes an occasion of grief to him. Why should he be called a high father who was not a father at all? But now, <laughs> but now that God had promised him a numerous issue and had given him a name which signifies so much, that name was his joy. Now, God calls things that are not as though they were. Now, it is the apostles' observation upon this very thing. We're going to go in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called these, these things which be not as though they were. That's in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 17. Now, God called Abraham the father of multitude because he should prove to be so in due time, though as yet he had but one child of the promise. He had two, two, he had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac, but he also, but Isaac was of the covenant of promise and Ishmael was just of the covenant. Because he came from Abraham. So that's why he's father of many nations. So it's on both angles. The seed coming from Abraham. Now that concludes this segment of Genesis. We're going to end with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the ways you speak to us. Thank you for speaking to us through your inspired word. Thank you for the time you show us something new. Thank you for your spirit who uses our life experience to teach us challenge us and inspire us i need to feel your love help me dear lord to be open and available to you 
May I hear what you want to say to me today, tomorrow and every day. Lord, help me search my heart. Help me to know where I have wandered from from you. Forgive me for any hypocrisy and help me to live in the full awareness of your love and grace and peace in Christ Jesus almighty name. May God be the glory as I walk, live and pray your image and likeness, the fruit of the spirit. I come in love and leave in peace, grace and peace to all the saints. Amen and amen. Now that concludes this segment of Genesis chapter 17, verse four through six. I hope you was edified. If you was edified with this segment and you was blessed with this segment, pass it on to a loved one. If you have any comments or questions, leave it in the comment section. Feel free to ask them because this is what we're here for. Edifying, learning, teaching and learning, growing in the knowledge, get better understanding of the wisdom of God. We don't want to be sit there and be cast out because we doubted who Christ was because that's when the sorrow comes in that because this is not a game. This is the real deal. God means what he says. And if he says it's through Jesus Christ, it's through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> That's simple as that. Thank you for listening, my brothers and sisters, and have a blessed day.